Hello? Can anyone around here speak basketball? There it is. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Hello, Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Podcast. You know, I'm just going <laughs> to roll with you echoing with me and, you know, try and be cool about it. I'm doing it. my best over here, okay? <laughs> me too, you know, trying to have a clean intro. We're all screwed up. There was like, it was minus 20, then it was plus 20. It's crazy out there. Yeah, we got some erratic weather here in Toronto. And erratic uh, GMs and players in the mm-hmm. NBA. Yeah. Wow. It's a fun time. Uh, you doing good? Oh, I'm doing quite well, Frederick. How are you? I'm great. Um, yeah. you know, if people want to listen to this podcast or they want to support us, yeah. how, how can they, what, what are the platforms that they might potentially be able to oh, find? Oh man, us there's so many in our magic purse of yes? <laughs> ways to listen to it. If you're Freddie, you're going to listen on Player FM, iTunes, yeah, if and you're Stitcher. Me <laughs> and you listen to your own podcast, you're going to listen to it on Player if FM. If you're hip, hip, you're going to listen to it on Spotify. And uh, you can also go to dunkspodcast.com. We got all our links and stuff there. And you can listen right there on our website. Shit. Yeah. And, oh, we were going to say, if you want to send us a message, our email is confederacyofdunks at gmail.com. I apologize to... uh, (laughs) We've been in contact with some fans, and uh, we've been pretty brutal. We got to check our email more. We're going to check the email more. We made it. Um, yeah. It's a real email, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not logging in enough, so that's on us. Yeah, that's on us. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got we got so much uh, good ball to talk to. Um, mm-hmm. Got a got a new guest. Uh, got a guest who's been here. Uh, I think twice. Three, twice. Twice. I think. I was gonna say three twice, times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's 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 bring on uh, let's bring on the uh, recurring guest okay. first. Um, he's an amazing DJ. Uh, he, he's got a wicked jersey collection. He's met a lot of actual basketball players, which is more than. I'd say the heavy majority of people that do this podcast. Uh, Give it up at home for Brian Kimmel. It's one of his personal tracks. I really don't think it is. But but if it is, I would be like, oh, cool. Um, How you doing, dude? Good. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm pretty good, man. Uh, are you are you freaking out during this uh, this time of year or what? Are Am you, I freaking out? How you, so? Like just uh, is is it information overload basketball wise or? Well, I actually just uh, I was I was away for most of 2019 so far, right? Like I've been in Thailand, right? I just got back and I actually like I've I've caught you know I've watched every Raptors game, but other than that, I haven't watched really any basketball. Um, and since I've been back for two weeks and I've been so brutally jet lagged that I like fall asleep at like six, 7 PM and just miss all the games, man, so. <laughs> your life sounds like intense, but also really cool. Like, uh, there's nothing cool about it. I assure you that. Well, I, but, uh, I feel like I am gonna, we're going to agree to disagree <laughs> there because I, I think you're cool. <laughs> um, straight up. Oh, uh, right. well, thank you. Okay. Um, let's, let's bring on guest number two. Uh, we recently did a show together. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, he was <clears> in <throat> the band, uh, but we know each other through comedy, uh, uh, years and years. Um, big basketball fan. First time on the pod. Give it up at home for Mike Lee. Um, this is your song, man. Wow. Sorry, dude. <laughs> It, uh, okay. All right. Well, it's it started kind of uh, it started kind of badass like like Brian's, you know. Yeah, I was appreciating that, and then it quickly became kind of like a children's <laughs> candy. Ass. Yeah, it got lame and weird pretty quick on you. I thought it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, what's I'm, good I'm is I'm gonna take that personally. Uh, roll with that. Yeah. What's really good is like that's now your pod, uh, or that's your song for every time you do this. So every pod. time you do it again, yeah, uh, so. it's a good incentive for me to return right yeah. there. <laughs> um, Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. I actually didn't run this by Matt, but yeah. uh, classic um, Freddie trying to uh, do a new segment. I picked a I picked a segment I thought would be fun. Uh, we did it once, and then it just didn't oh, apply boy. since. But guess what? It applies again. Really? So, Matt, I don't know if you do. You have the the Hunger Games sound effect on? Of course, you? I do. Okay. Well, why don't you give me? I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Give me four. No, I'm sorry. 
Give me three cannon sounds. Wow. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> he Kyle passed Lowry, three people. Kyle Lowry has passed three more people on the all-time three points oh made list. Wow. Now, uh, there's some fluidity there. Two of these players are active. Was it Durant? Um, no, it was uh, Damian Lillard passed him while yeah. he was injured, and so did Trevor Ariza. Yeah, and he's repassed both those guys, but he also permanently passed Michael Finley. Whoa! Wow. And heads up, uh, Manu Ginobili, Mike Bibby, Nick Van Exel, he's coming for you. He's All also right. coming for you, Wes Matthews. But Wes Matthews is also gunning this year, so yeah, we'll yeah. see about that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I, I felt like it was appropriate to bring that that segment back because it was it was a failed idea. I'll admit it. And uh, well, I'm, he I'm, got I'm, hurt. He got hurt, right? Yeah, he would have passed a lot more people. But yeah, here we are. Um, a segment that I think is working pretty well. Uh, <laughs> people seem to like it. <laughs> Matt, why don't you tell oh, everyone good. something they don't know about Oliver, Oliver Miller, Miller, the Big O? Oh, so you know that already? Oh, everyone. <laughs> okay, if you're listening to this podcast, I assume you know. The nickname, The Big O. If the you don't, o. that's Oliver Miller's nickname. Yep, that's, yeah. that's the one thing we all know, right? And then after the that, that's, there's nothing yeah. like, I know nothing else. That's the main thing I know. <laughs> you know why he's The Big O. He was named after Olympic Stadium. <laughs> I mean, that's there you uh, go. probably a lot of the slights that he was used to in his career. Yeah, he was a large man. He, yep. uh, at one not point, a slight. He, he was 350 <laughs> at one point. Hey, that's pretty big for a 6'9 guy. Wait, I'm sorry. 350? 350. That's, that's pretty quite, big. That's, pretty big. No, no, that's like a poor man Zion Williams. <laughs> <laughs> poor man Zion Williams is the most like beefy, muscly guy. Like he definitely looks like he's supposed to be a uh, running back. But anyway, anyway yeah. sorry. Anyways, did he you know that he had, uh, uh, so yeah, he was the big O. Did you know he had like, he had a lot of fat shaming, obviously, during his career. Even the mascot for Phoenix fat shamed him. His own mascot on the team uh, dressed up as the like made himself look more overweight and wore his jersey. So he was. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty deadly. <laughs> yeah, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's pretty deadly when your own mascot dealt does with it. With a lot of uh, you know a lot of issues about his weight. Um, Post NBA, did you know he you know he got into a bit of a fight at an, a barbecue and pistol whipped someone and had to do some time for it? Did you know that? I didn't know that, but I'm kind of glad that it was at a barbecue. Um, <laughs> that just went, I'm glad. You, I mean, yeah, they're probably playing bocce ball or something, yeah, and for sure. you know, got it out of hand. Uh, he also sold cars for a bit in Arizona, and now he's focused on losing weight. He's lost about sixty pounds, and uh, he's available for motivational speaking uh, if you want. Wow. Yeah. And then basically, like, so <laughs> as far as like motivational, like. Speeches? Does he just go around pistol whipping kids? Yeah, or? essentially. <laughs> cool, cool. That's how he gets uh, them in shape. But uh, yeah, it was hard at him being the the big O sometimes, you know? Fair enough. Had a lot of cheeseburger comments, apparently. Uh, shit. <laughs> the okay. court. Well, maybe him and, you know, Chuck Hayes. Yeah, I know. Chill out I was kind of like, figured this out. This is nice. Um, Glenn, Glenn Davis, you know? Glenn Davis, yeah, <laughs> he's still <laughs> he, in the mix, you know? Dr. Trailer. Oh, oh Tractor yeah. Trailer. You're Robert. Like, uh, yeah. ro- uh, Robert Tractor Trailer. That's. That's 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 the one. I remember that guy ripping down some rims. He could dunk. Yeah, he could yeah. dunk. Ray um, Felton. Ray Felton. <laughs> yeah, Ray, little, little Ray Felton's a sneaky one though, because people are like, oh yeah, because he's not because he's not like six foot ten. No, and he's right. been in the league a long time, so you're like, oh, he's pretty crafty. Yeah. Um, I remember just like, the thing on him. I remember wishing the Raptors were going to draft him. That's oh, where I was as a Raptor fan. I was like, oh, I want the speedy guard. Like, no. that's who I want. And I was mad Felton? that yeah. we didn't draft him. I'm so happy we didn't draft him. I've no. always <laughs> wanted us to stay far, far away from Ray Felton. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember wanting DJ Augustine, and then we got him, and I was like, wait, what? Why did I want that? He's like kind of just a... Well, he's, he's not actually, that bad. No, he's, he's, good. I mean, he's right. Yeah, he's like a super sub kind of. Yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he's good for like two guy. or three games a year where he drops like 30. And, and usually yeah. those are against the Raptors, those two or three a year. He he, he loves yeah. he loves playing well against the Raptors. Well, like most scrubs do. Not that Augustine's a scrub, but like guys like Mike Scott and... For sure. I don't, I don't know. Mike uh, Scott. In DJ, that, DJ Miles. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, My, yeah. Mike Scott in that Washington series last year was just like... 
Uh, he was so on fire. It was frustrating. Yeah. Um, mm. Okay, let's uh, let's get to some Raptors talk. Matt, why don't you give me that Raptors sting? Welcome to Jurassic Park. They're not an up-and-coming team. They're here. They're here. They're here. They're here. Okay, Brian, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you up first. Uh, let's just dive in. Um, so my question to you is, uh, from the Raptors' perspective, to deadline or not to deadline? Like, how involved should they be? Uh, I'll, I'll just yeah, leave it just open-ended. Depends on, you know, what's out there. Right. Um, they definitely shouldn't make a move for the sake of making a move. Mm-hmm. And I feel like... I'm firmly in that category. Yeah. Right? I like this team as is, yeah. but you know, whatever. If you're going to be oper- like, you know, yeah, I, they don't need to like overreact to like the relatively mediocre play of the last month or so, because there's all the injuries and all that stuff. And that's um, a great point. Yeah, exactly. Like, like this previous month of play mm-hmm. should not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we saw how well they played when everyone was healthy, and you know, everyone was had their little defined roles and all mm-hmm. that. Uh, you know, obviously missing JV has been huge for them. Um, I, I'm I'm a little worried that Masai is kind of feeling like he's got to do something. He's feeling the heat, but at the same time, that's not really in his character, right? Because he's like, he's like a cool dude. You know, he he doesn't panic. But that, yeah, that said, uh, you know, I I don't know I, who knows what's going on in his head. Yeah, I think it's a good point with Masai because I think he is. You know, at first I thought maybe he was a bit too calculated in, uh, as a GM where yep. everything was, um, you know, actually a, a Raptors Republic guy, um, a PhD Steve, uh, w- w- one time was on the podcast and he, he said something to the effect of, you know, he can turn nickels and dimes into quarters, but he can never turn that cord, those quarters into a loony. And uh, he clearly did it with Kawhi, right? So he's definitely can make the big move, but... Even if he's pressured, I think he still makes sure he wins the trade. So that that makes me feel pretty good. But um, yeah, Mike, how you how you feeling on uh, on on deadline? Yeah, uh, pretty, as a pretty similar. I I feel like we uh, we shouldn't just go and make a move just for the sake of it. I, I pretty much agree with with everything that was mm-hmm. just said. Um, because yeah, the Raptors are clearly pacing themselves for the year, and they're exper- uh, they're experimenting, right? Like they're not they're not trying to win every game necessarily. Obviously, yeah. they want to win, but they're trying different lineups, they're trying different combinations, they're trying to uh, play without key players, you know. And so, the only thing is, I wish they could, you know, I wish they could upgrade, but I don't think there's really anything out there that makes sense right now where they could get anything better than what they're giving up right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, the, the, this this big you know Memphis rumor just came, yeah. out. and uh, I'm obviously just like hot taken all over the internet here. I've had some time to collect myself a little bit. Um, I feel like it's kind of in the middle of uh, being a little bit advantageous, and also a bit of like why would you do that type of trade. Um, we would be taking on more money to trade, by the way. You know, I'm sure there's more pieces involved, even just to make the money match. But it's uh, Gasol and Conley for JV and uh, Lowry. Um, I wow. Think, yeah, I think that's Memphis giving us something like, just just off the top of my head, like $15 million more. Yeah. Um, so I think we would definitely have to, because basically... Uh, Lowry and Conley cancel each other out there, but like Lowry makes 33 and Conley makes 32. Um, but, uh, yeah, Gasol makes like 26 this year. Yeah. And, uh, I'm pretty sure Jonas is out like 16. So we'd have to, whether it's CJ or Norm or Fred or something, uh, we'd have to throw in there likely, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's a bit of a marginal move, I think. Mm-hmm. Although at the same time, I'm kind of left with this feeling of like, I get that uh, Conley specifically is probably. I'm sure there's people who think Lowry's better, and there's probably people who think Conley's better. I think it's pretty tight. Yep. I think Gasol is significantly better than JV, um, even though he's almost a decade older. I just think he has more defensive. He could just do more things on the court. Um, now, how the gelling works and all that kind of stuff. It's it's it, it would be a lot mid season, and it could backfire. And it could also leave us with some pretty large outsized contracts. And then there's the whole conversation of, is that going to help us keep Kawhi? 
Um, or is it actually going to hurt us when it comes to Kawhi? So I just went off there for a sec. Brian, what are your thoughts on this rumor? Um, well, the latest word is that it was actually Memphis that proposed that trade to Toronto. And, right. And, yeah, and the Raptors shot it down. Um, yeah, I think Conley and uh, and uh, Kyle are kind of a wash. It, it was actually kind of weird because Conley is one of the guys that, like, I really would have liked the Raptors to go after – if Kyle were to leave, um, I think he'd fill that role really well. Me but too. But that said, he's yeah. also kind of a little bit older. And, you know, if, if Kyle, you know, assuming Kyle plays out the rest of this contract, don't know how appealing that'll be anymore. Probably want to go for someone younger like Drew Holiday or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that, um, I don't know, I just, uh, JV has just been such a consummate professional. I think we talked about this probably the first two times I've been yeah, on this I'm, podcast. Yeah, I'm a big J- like, I love JV. Like, yeah. I'm a, I'm a JV and fan. I think sure. that adding Gasol, like, obviously, like, in a vacuum, he's a lot better. He's got mm-hmm. more skills. But that said, you know, how does that impact the chemistry of the team midway through the season? All of a sudden, it means that you're going to either move Serge back to power forward or move him to the bench. Like, I don't see the point in it's that. It's funny you say point. that. That's my so, biggest feeling because Gasol yeah. has to start over Absolutely. Serge. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's a bit tricky there. Sorry, uh, did I just cut you off? Uh, no, and I mean, uh, that's pretty uh, That's pretty much it. You know, how would Gasol uh, mesh with – like, I think he's a team guy, and, uh, you know, it's not like he brings some type of prima donna attitude or anything like yeah. that, but it's just like – it just just messes everything up, messes up all the rotations and everything. Uh, and Serge has been a you know a revelation for us in the middle. Yeah. So, you know, why would you mess that up if you are going to make a move? You know, and you're adding extra salary, and the person that you're adding is way over, like not over the hill, but he's old, right? So if you are going to sure. take on salary, you know, you're looking for someone that's like young, controllable, that's got like a ton of upside, or is like an elite talent, which. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think that trade addresses. Yeah, I think uh, I think you, you basically nailed it, um, Mike. You got any got anything to add on, or yeah, or just, even uh, yeah, yeah I mean, it's a different take. That's cool. No, too. first of all, I, I agree with a lot of that. Like, I am a JV fan, and I'll probably just say this throughout the whole podcast that like I agree pretty much with what's being said. But hey, man, it's all it's also we're, like we're, they're we're, they they wanted like our our longest serving Raptors, right? Like. Lowry and JV are the longest serving Raptors, longest tenured currently. And if they were to leave like that, it's Imagine they also demanded the Raptor. Oh my god, they probably would. <laughs> it's like, but, oh uh, shit. <laughs> but uh but yeah, I feel like they um uh it would it would you'd really feel that absence of that leadership that Lowry brings in the locker room and that kind of attitude where he really is he calls it my team. He's been calling it, you know, this is my team. He's been mm-hmm. saying that kind of low key for for years. So um Conley obviously is a great leader and stuff, but you'd you'd be switching out your leader midseason. We just switched our other leader, yep, half yep. a season ago, right? So it's it's a lot of of shift, and we switched our coach. So yeah, I feel like this is working right now. Don't don't mess this up. Like this this chemistry, they're they're uh, greater than the sum of their the sums greater than the parts. But how does that how does that expression go? What is that? Um, greater than the sum of their sum parts. Is gra- that sounds or right. The, or the sum is. No, some, no, no. Some yeah, comes right, in later. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. right. That one. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna <laughs> yeah, try yeah, to say it yeah, again. Don't. That one. <laughs> um cool. Let's let's move on to Kawhi. Um this is maybe just a non you know, I'm thinking of questions here and it might just be a non question. It always feels that way a little bit to me with Kawhi because I feel like the stakes are kind of artificial in some ways, like because you know, it's hard to know how he actually feels and he's doing basically pretty great. Um but I was definitely of the mind that he would, you know, he'd really be in the MVP uh, conversation throughout the season and even get some votes. But I'm wondering if if the missed games uh, are starting to add up and maybe if Harden's run and uh, and Giannis just being consistent has kind of tiered the MVP race a little bit because LeBron's also missed a bunch of time. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, Mike, I'll start with you. Is Kawhi out of the MVP race? Um, I wouldn't say entirely, but out of that first tier, absolutely, I think. And I think it is because missed games, which for sure would disqualify him kind of uh, in the eyes of others. But also it's like he's the one who's asking for this time off. Like he's treating this season as a a gradually coming back type season, right? So I don't think think he is gunning for the MVP. I don't think that's something he's thinking about. 
and therefore I think he's going to lose to those people who are in that mindset. Like clearly Harden is going for it. Like he, how many games in a row did he have a 50 point scoring or something? He had like five games in a row where he scored 50 or more something like he was, he's clearly going for MVP. Yeah. Yeah. Harden's averaging 36 uh, so and a half So basically a game. like sophomore Jordan numbers. Like, yeah. 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 So yeah, I feel like he's definitely out of that first tier. He's still an, obviously an MVP caliber player. And anytime he wants to, he's just as good as any other player in the league. But he's clearly pacing himself as far as a regular season performer. Right. Yeah. And and just for some perspective here, James Harden has played 50 games. Kawhi has played 40. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think we're probably looking at some of these top tier guys like needing to get a little bit injured or something. Uh, for someone like Kawhi to, Ooh. or you know, are you, you, uh, you know what I mean, right? Like no, just miss sure. a couple yeah, yeah. games because if if Giannis like Iron Man's it, has incredible stats, and then the Bucks win the East, then I don't I don't know what kind of case Kawhi has against that. Um, where where are you at, Brian? Yeah, I mean he's not in the he's not in the picture in my opinion. Uh, again, that's not saying that he's not an MVP caliber player. It's just you know just looking at this season. You have Harden, as you mentioned, and uh, who was the other guy? And Giannis. And Giannis, and then, uh, yeah. and then also Paul George, who's playing out of his mind. He's – yeah, I'm looking at his Paul stats George right has now. just been kill- – I mean, people are just kind of sleeping on him because of how White crazy – because of how crazy Harden's been. But yeah. Paul George has been going nuts. And then also Steph. Like, you can't count him out either. So those, to me, are the top four right now. I might be forgetting someone. No, I I, yeah. I I think the one, one guy who you know sometimes gets left out of that conversation for me, anyways, is KD. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's all, it's so tough with the Warriors, right? I mean, yeah, but, KD is yeah. is kind of in a similar situation to Kawhi. Like you know, he's an elite yeah. player. I wouldn't say that. Like just in the context of this season, I wouldn't put him in that conversation. And we saw like we saw how they kind of struggled a bit, like when Steph was out. And, I think like, so. You know, with all that talent they still had, like KD couldn't really carry them. Uh, uh, yeah, like they're still good, but they're clearly special. Exactly, exactly, and that and that's the other thing that hurts Kawhi's case is that like you know the Raps have a better you record know, when he sits than when he plays. So I mean that's valid, right? Kind of, yeah. You, you, that's you, true. you have yeah. to add it up. Like I'm, I'm looking at his stats right now, and he, you know he's leading the East in scoring, which is pretty great. Um, at, but you know, very marginally, uh, he's twenty seven point four over Embiid, who's twenty seven point two. So mm-hmm. it's pretty tight, mm-hmm. but. Um, yeah, you know he's he's got two steals a game and uh, he's rebounding really well. He's rebounding well, and you know he's he's got good percentages. But I think we're uh, and I've, I've heard people say this before, but we're in a type of year where if you just go stats alone, mm-hmm. there's you know six to seven viable MVP candidates, and I think that's you know because of the increase in scoring and all this kind of stuff. But um, contextually. If a guy like Harden is is scoring thirty seven points and you're scoring twenty seven, it would be tough. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, my last question for the raps. Um, this better be about Alvin Williams, or I'm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So, um, <laughs> have you ever met Alvin Williams, Mike? Go ahead. No, but I did meet Mo Pete. Okay. Oh, I, I, I'm glad that that you had a prepared response to that question. I didn't know where that was going, actually, but I, yeah. but yeah. I met Alvin Williams in, uh, it was uh, when we lost to Brooklyn. In, oh, in 2014? In game one. Yeah, I went yeah. to the airport, and he saw my Raptors, like, a shirt from the game. Yeah. And he was, like, charging his cell phone. And he looked at me, and we, I looked at him, and I nodded, and he nodded. And I was like, okay, that's, cool. all, that's all he wants right now. <laughs> all right. Dude's probably tired. Um <laughs> But uh, sorry, I really derailed. Where no, you're going no, with that. it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, Brian. Um, uh, you know, we've kind of been talking about this a little bit, but uh, as a Raptor fan, uh, and we, we've been hearing this a lot uh, this year. But uh, all in. What is that like for this current situation? What is all in for the Raptors? Are we already all in with Kawhi? Are we only all in if we you know trade a bunch of stuff for AD? Like what? Like. What, like is that kind of just a empty term? All yeah. in or, or yeah, or, I don't know. Don't you know. can you can always uh, you know you can always offer more, right? So it's like they traded Demar in the off season. It was like, oh my god, our franchise player. Yeah, we got Kawhi. It's a gamble. We're all in. But now you know there's like oh a, an outside shot that they could get AD maybe. Yeah, so and that's really going all in. Well, maybe they do get AD, and we've got AD and Kawhi. 
But then it's like, oh, but you can also like trade the ACC for, I don't know, like <laughs> yeah, I a know. super young like, or something. Well, like well that's the thing. If you like, like keep trying to win, yeah, you just there's, keep kind you, of mining. You know what I mean? There's all these things so. like, like, oh, like some company comes along and says like, oh, if you add our patch to your jersey, we'll <laughs> yeah. throw you a couple hundred million dollars that you could use towards <laughs> I like you're all like, in whatever. going you business. Know, it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. It, it just keeps going and going. So. I don't know what that really means. No, that's you know, that that's I, fair. Yeah. Um yeah, Mike, so like uh, I'm sure you've been hearing all this kind of like all in talk. Yeah. Is that I, what, I think what's your version of, of all in? Uh I I guess like what it means on its own to me is that they're, you know, they're open to trying to make any deal that will make their team better, but that's always what their stance has been anyways, right? right. So I think all in is just it's just a way for fans to feel a little more excitement and feel like we're climbing a mountain in a way, which... Oh, I like that. You know, it is what I pictured with, with what Brian said. But that mountain, like, you get to another peak and then it's like, oh, shit, this mountain is much higher than I realized. This is not the top yeah, of the mountain, right? It just totally. keeps going further in the clouds. And so, yeah, I don't know. I feel I'm, like, I'm liking <laughs> where this question has taken us, by the way. <laughs> one very businessy answer. One <laughs> I know. extremely esoterically artsy. Yeah. No good reason to answer. But... Um, yeah, it is weird because every year, you know, whether it's end of season conference or be beginning of season presser, it's always, we're, you know, we're doing whatever we can to win. We're always trying to make our team better. So at the end of the day, that's, that hasn't changed whatsoever. Yeah. You know, whether, whether we were the winning 30 games this season, uh, 12 years ago or winning 50 now, it's always mm -hmm. like, oh, we need to do better. So, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I find that I'll, I'll generally by accident, um, spend 10 minutes of podcast praising Siakam and then another like five minutes of the podcast finding a way to like slight Brad Stevens. <laughs> but I, you know, I'm notice I noticed my own isms. Okay. People. Uh, but, um, no, I, I for, for me, a version of all in, um, and I always refer to like, you know, my dark times as a Raptor fan where I, I'm like, was genuinely trying to convince myself that Bargnani was going to become Dirk. Like it, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> like, um, and I feel that an all in version of us would, we'd look through our bench and we genuinely have no one to get excited about for the future. So I think that if we somehow traded, you know, Pascal and OG, that would be an, uh, uh, that would be getting close to me to being like, wow, we, are expecting to win right now or resign the people we have. And there truly is no cost controlled players that we're excited about. Um, but then at the same time, I always go back to Masai Ujiri and he's just kind of like, he keeps finding guys. So like, I mean, when, when Boucher really gets a chance, when he really gets a, a substantial role, how, how good's he going to be? You know, maybe not, maybe he'll be like uh, as good as a backup, mm -hmm. but it just seems like Masai won't stop finding guys that mm -hmm. are that outperform their expectations. So yeah, I, I, I guess that was kind of like a non-answer to my own question. But, that was a better uh, answer than I gave, in my opinion. No, I liked the yours was like a patch. You started getting like cyborgy and like I don't really know where I was going with that. But <laughs> well, I feel like all you know, what, now that I'm thinking about it though, I mean, all in comes from poker, right? So if yeah. you're, you know, mm -hmm. in the literal yeah. sense of the word, it would mean. You know, it basically implies taking on a substantial amount of risk it, for right. for immediate, uh, you, you know, enough. for imme yeah. immediate success. Um, and in the case of sports, obviously, that means like mortgaging your future, mm -hmm. like you said. So yeah, you just so you you were on to something though with the ACC. Or the Scotia. Yeah, like if you yeah. gave away like our <laughs> venue and like and like I don't know licensing and branding rights and stuff like that. <laughs> like, are we getting that the smoothie be... king's and like and if you also <laughs> said that like yeah like we're giving you like all our fans as well <laughs> like, well, like we're trading we're trading all, all we're trading all the Raptors fans to well, I, I remember I know, was it uh, Doc Clippers Rivers got Detroit oh eight two eight so, yeah. Doc Rivers got traded for for picks and remember when oh, we right. traded yeah, Jeff crazy. Weltman Coach and we got a second traded. round. Second rounder for Orlando. Yeah. So like things are possible. Like yeah. we could be yeah. like, all right, we'll give you guys sort of shawarma yeah. or, or whatever. Like that would yeah. be, you know, that'd be tough. But I think uh, <laughs> maybe there is an all in version where we're like actually like offering up human beings. Like wow. maybe like just a section, like you guys can have three ten. 
You know what I mean? Like, like Fire Festival, dude. That's, <laughs> that, dude was all, that dude was all in. <laughs> yeah, Fire <laughs> Fest was all in. <laughs> Fire Fest was definitely all in to that, the point that where That should it's have like, been our answer. Just all of us is like Fire Fest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Fire Fest is, is, is getting that guy, Billy, to come on this podcast <laughs> and like kick the shit out of me or something. <laughs> oh, um, <God. laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, before we go to the NBA, uh, we're going to do another little another, player here. Yeah. So, uh, Matt, why don't you tell me something I don't know about Greg Foster? Foster. Greg Foster. Do you remember Greg Foster? I do. He joined the Raps in the uh, 2002 3 season and, like, a little bit late in November. Um, did you know that he, he got on the team because of the special hardship rule that the Raptors used? No, but that sounds so sad. That's that's yeah. that's the type of like Especially, that's the opposite of all in. <laughs> Have you that's heard of this like, rule? Have no, you heard of it? it sounds pathetic though. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> pathetic. It means that like essentially um your team is so injured that you're allowed to add right. another player to the team and like I guess go over the roster. Oh it. yeah. So we just as a reminder who was hurt at the time, Vince Carter, Antonio Davis, Hakeem Olajuwon, Nate Huffman, and Eric Montrose. Montrose? Yeah, so, so that's like that was, every yeah. big man on that team. Yeah, they were all and Vince. So yeah, Greg Foster ended up playing 34 games for them. Uh, he has a tattoo, uh, the name Bowie, on his on his okay. body. Okay, uh, not because he's a huge David Bowie fan. See, you know the, why he's got a? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm already liking where this is going. Nice he's and weird. Told that when he was in high school. Uh, people told him that he looked like Sam Bowie. Do you know who Sam Bowie is? Um, vaguely. <laughs> okay, so Sam Bowie is uh, has been considered to be one of the greatest draft busts in the NBA. Oh, Sam Bowie. Sorry, yeah, he was a guy who drafted over Michael, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I thought he was a musician. Um, no, no, yeah, no. Sorry, I, didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. I threw you off with the David Bowie thing. You did. Uh, but so, yeah, anyways, he's carried that tattoo the rest of his life. So he had a uh, tattoo of Sam Bowie? Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. guy's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he's, do you know he's assistant coach for the Hawks right now? He was um, No, coach. I didn't know that. He was assistant coach for the Bucks for about three seasons. Really? And then Shit. first year with the, the Hawks. And... Um, I think the only other thing he's I also have he's on also him. got a tattoo of Nixon on his back. Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, no, he just you know he went back to college in 2011. You know, I, I commend that for uh, someone in their 50s, and uh, you know he got his bachelor's in uh, interdisciplinary studies. Pardon Did me, you know sir. That? No, I I mean I didn't know any of this. This is all great, dude. <laughs> and yeah, he's got a son that plays for Gonzaga. Um, but I don't know if he's any good or not. Glenn Foster Jr., keep your ears open for that guy. All right. And that's pretty much Glenn right. Foster for you. Wait, Glenn Foster or Greg Foster? Greg Foster. Glenn Foster is that great Canadian guy. <laughs> that's right. Who is a comedian. That's right, yeah. No, but I, I did really... stand up for if, him once. If, Glenn Foster, no, not Glenn Foster, Greg Foster. If so. you, like uh, like us, have been doing comedy for <laughs> over 15 yeah. years in Ontario, you might that know the Canadian name. guy, yeah. yeah. Cheers Absolutely. to Glenn Foster. <laughs> Uh, that was awesome, Matt. Thank you very much. Um, okay, why don't you give me that NBA sting? Okay, you just trolled me, right? Was that, was that me? I did, but I like, you know, David Lynch your soundbite a little bit. Well, uh, for any new listeners to the podcast, I'm sorry. Please listen again. Uh, one time I was on NBA TV and I got really excited and I said... LeBron is going to pass Jabbar yeah. uh, in scoring. And I said, he's going to pass Jabbar. So he's going to pass Jabbar. Journey, exactly. <laughs> there you go. That, that's me. Yeah. Um, he got pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's you making uh, making. We weird. should do a cannon thing for that. When he passes Jabbar, we'll put the can another cannon off. Sure. Maybe a nuclear sure. missile yeah. sound or something. That's how it's fun. We'll do that in four <laughs> years. Thanks. <laughs> um, cool. <laughs> But no, I do appreciate you uh, remixing that for me. Uh, thanks. <laughs> no um, okay. Uh, we're going to go back to AD uh, just because it's uh, he's kind of dominating this deadline here. Um, <clears throat> Mike, can you, can you make a prediction for an AD trade? Oh, wait. You know what? Let me just say um, that uh, I think the, the most recent Lakers offer is uh, they're playing around for a little bit, but the Lakers have you know kind of trickled out. What I would say is is the real offer, 
which is basically the whole team. Mm -hmm. So it's Zubac, uh, Ingram, Ball, Hart, Kuzma, Kuzma. two first-round picks. Yeah, and Pope. And and Pope. Pope. Yeah. yeah, and Pope. Um, and I'm assuming it would be, you know, AD, maybe Solomon Hill, maybe some, some you know, salary filler there. But, you know, the the whole, the ragtag clown car was included <laughs> there for a bit. They had Rondo, Lance, yeah, and Beasley. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Uh, they probably pissed New Orleans <laughs> off quite a bit. But, um, yeah, so anyways, that's that seems to be the, like, you know, I guess the, the Lakers can offer more picks. You are forgetting one person that is Who's included. That? Should we yell? Lavar. Oh, yeah. That's huge. Lavar? Lavar would go to New Orleans as well. And that is LeVar something would. you have to think about. Okay. Because he's enough. he said his famous line where he's like, I'm gonna will it into existence that my son's going to Phoenix. Yeah. So he's gonna be a nightmare. <gasps> I I mean, I think we said this last week, but you gotta give LeVar credit <laughs> for like inserting himself into this conversation when his son is like an add-on to a trade. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. When, it's when you're insane. like when you're like the seventh name on a trade. Your your dad can't be like heads up. I got some ideas yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, um, that's funny though. But uh, yeah, so um, uh, we we did talk about the AD uh, AD trade last week. Um, but what what what's your gut telling you, Mike? Where where do you think AD is going to go? Well, my gut's off because the gut answer makes no sense. My gut was like Washington, and then it's like well, that makes no sense. So it's it's fair uh, enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would I would hope it'd be somewhere like Portland. You know, I would hope it'd be somewhere not not like a current super team, uh, but just so hope. <laughs> but 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 do you think that New Orleans is going to do the no, FULA my, my, trade? My, my, my honest thought is that they're not going to trade him, which is so boring. Hmm. Which is like I hope that doesn't happen. You know, I hope right. a trade does happen. I hope something exciting happens. But my gut says they're not going to trade him in the next few days, which kind of sucks. I feel like they're going to. I think that's a pretty good take. Like if you're if you're if you're coming from New Orleans perspective, in a lot of ways your franchise is on the line. So you could, you know, genuinely if you don't cash in enough for AD, it could be the slow end of New Orleans basketball. Um cuz it's pretty I would say they're in the, you know, that 5 to 7 group of franchises that are oh, there's a little bit of volatility there I mean, you never know with ownership or whatever but uh brian what, what's your what you got or, uh, or i agree hey, i don't i don't think he's going anywhere before the trade deadline they're gonna probably wait till the off season see where those uh boston <laughs> yeah see where the draft yeah, picks yeah. for end, sure end up um no i mean boston's crazy to continue pursuing him. like they've made it clear that he doesn't want to go there I, okay and yeah, and they're sorry. they're pursuing him heavily anyway and uh, you know I think, that's I think that's to that's to New Orleans' advantage because that just means that you know, you know Boston and LA can get into a crazy bidding war over them. That's right. right? Totally. More, more picks. You know, more. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, he's a, he's a special yeah. special yeah. player. So I think yeah. that um, New Orleans wants to make sure that they're in in the position. You know, like operate as well. They should be. I mean, yeah, any totally. you know. Any respectful, uh, respectable GM would ensure sure. they get the most maximum return yeah. possible. So, um, but yeah, I think that them them sitting it out probably that's probably the best take. Uh, th- this most recent LA offer makes me think that uh, it could get done, and LA is pushing for it real hard. But um, there's some spite stuff going on, I think, too. And 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 you actually touched on some. Here I go on the on the Boston slander, but uh, okay. Regardless of my own slander, AD's dad coming out and slamming Ainge for what he did to Isaiah Thomas. Like you know, people have talked about this the Isaiah Thomas thing for for a long time, but we're seeing a a top tier transcendent player's dad publicly slam you know, who most people think is, is the best GM in basketball. So that's significant, whatever way you want to slice it. Even if it's like, even if that, that's more, more bluster than it actually is like, like substantial. The fact that that made news is huge. The fact that Kyrie is now seemingly calling into question Mm -hmm. that he would resign with uh, Boston. Yeah. Maybe that's just a negotiating tactic. I I, I mean, it's hard to know, right? Like maybe, maybe, you know, you you never know what's actually going to happen until it happens, but I think those are like Brian. You you touched on this. 
if you're Boston and you spent the last couple of years, you know, building this giant thing where you, you know, you made the Kyrie trade, you got Hayward, he got injured for a year, but this is a year that you're like a kind of a contender maybe. And everyone knows that the ultimate objective was to get AD. And right. then all of a sudden, just as that's on the horizon, first of all, it comes out AD's not going to resign. And second of all, his dad pretty openly slams you. Well, and, and, uh, you know, Boston wasn't on the list that leaked of teams. That right. AD yeah. They weren't even go. on the original. I think list. it's very evident that AD and his camp don't want to be in Boston. Yeah. So, you know, to me, it's kind of crazy that they'd say, fuck it. Let's just go after him anyway. But that's their prerogative. So how about, um, how about this Bucks thing? Michael, I'll ask you. The, oh, sure. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. the Bucks on the list? <laughs> What is that? <laughs> that because was so weird. Every other destination made sense from a market perspective. Obviously, like right. first and foremost, which you know, players of that status, it makes sense for. But yeah, I think I guess so. Uh, to me, that makes it seem like okay, he loves Giannis Antetokounmpo first of all. Like he envisions him and Giannis being some sort of, like I mean, taking over would, the league. Right? Those like, two, I think, would do pretty well. And Giannis is locked up for four years, five years. Right. So so you know. So he yeah, and then uh, but you know on paper it doesn't make any sense like the logistics of it like mm. i don't see how it gets done it's more just like a fantasy of his i think he wants to just put out there so it's not a fake thing to to to, <laughs> to let like, the other markets know that like hey maybe i would go to this like yeah like don't pool. think that i'm not going to go to a small market kind of thing yeah like don't think i won't go to sacramento okay yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well that's the thing i can picture him <laughs> i picture him that wizards uniform even though it makes no sense i can right. just picture him like him and it makes no sense. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a ton of different ways you can interpret that, right? Yeah. Another thing is that that could just be uh, their way of you know they might it might be just totally disingenuous and and they're like let's let's put a small market team out there so we don't look superficial. I'm more on that. Like side we of actually me. we want to be in L.A. or New York, right? And we yeah. want you know all the attention, the endorsements, yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. But you know that'd be too uh, you know intentions would be too transparent if you know we only include teams like the Knicks or the Clippers. I think so Damn, because like right. why was Milwaukee <laughs> right. in no other list yeah. prior to this? Yeah. That said, he could also possibly want to just team up with Giannis because for you sure know, it's like I I either want to be in awesome city or I want to be in a place where I'm really gonna be you know dominating the league for like, years to come. AD's so. twenty five, Giannis yeah. is twenty three, yeah, or twenty four. Yeah, like yeah, that most, is yeah. that is a legitimate. That's put scary. it this way: if AD comes to the Bucks, I. Depending on what they lost, I w that would be a team that I'm genuinely terrified. I still don't, I, I feel like that's one of those teams where I, I'm usually one who believes you can't just have two you know stars and be gutted after that. You won't right. win. Mm -hmm. You need quality role players and all that. But with them, I'm like you could put like as long as your bench had some lead, like as long as you could patch through those those bench moments. As long as you don't have an injury, I'm like. Yeah, you're gonna win. You just, yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, you need some shooters. And, uh, yeah, yeah, find guys that can make open shots, and yeah, they're gonna fine. Have the years. rest, of, you know, those two guys do so much stuff. Like, Anand and Kupo's playmaking, totally. You it know, would be his wild ability like to that. defend the paint. Um, and they're yeah, both the only gonna keep expanding their games, and yeah, yeah exactly. Insane. Yeah. Um, actually, I didn't have this on the list either, but I should bring it up. Um, what are you guys? Uh, uh, Brian, I'll, I'll jump to you first. Do you have any take on the on the Chris Stapps Porzingis trade? Um, I'm sure you do. Uh, I did. Yeah, at first I kind of. I know it's moving so fast. Yeah, right? yeah, no, there's just so much like stuff. Longer, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, it almost. Yeah, it's, it, it, oh, it's five days. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, yeah you're it right. Feels, it's, it feels it's like still a, it feels <laughs> like a year ago because he uh, like one game because <laughs> like everyone's attention way. like once that got done, it's like everyone's attention's just like shifted to like what's AD gonna do? Yeah, and that came out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, there's you you know you can. There's a lot of different ways you can look at that trade too, as being you know as either the Mavs being the winner or the Knicks being the winner. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I think clearly in terms of optics, the Knicks are losers. Right. Right. I mean, like people aren't going to be you know looking at the big picture and seeing that they're clearing this cap space yeah. to make a run at these free agents and to get the, the picks and mm -hmm. they could go after Zion or RJ or whoever. Right. They're just going to see that oh they lost KP, who they had under a really friendly like rookie scale deal. Yeah. And he's a and he's a sure thing, you know? And yeah, like why um who was it that went off on him the other day? It was uh Oh Charles Barkley. Oh no, well, sorry, Charles Barkley too. went off on A D. Uh uh no, what's his face? Um was it one of one of the inside the NBA guys? Or? No, uh brain fart. Uh Max Kellerman. 
Mm. Max, Max Kellerman, Kellerman went off on went, the Knicks. Went off on the Knicks. Okay, and rightfully so, I thought, because yeah, uh, you don't, you know, you keep guys like KP and add those big free agents. Yeah, and build that's around my it. main yeah. takeaway. Yeah, yeah. right. Just like, give them up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this this could work out for them, but they're the Knicks. You know, you know, it's not going to work out for them. <laughs> but, okay, and, yeah, and, those are my two takeaways. And, <laughs> and, and the other thing is is the way that they've treated KP and as well as the way they've treated Ennis Cantor lately. Right. Uh, has got to send up major red flags for like any prospective free agents yeah. that are totally. looking at the Knicks. Uh, did you see that? I think it was like a tweet that they sent out after they traded KP and it was like a list of his accomplishment accomplishments as a Nick, but it was like, so backhanded. They were like missed X amount of games. What? Didn't show up for his exit interviews and stuff like that. The they were like, slander. they were like, yeah, they were like slandering him. That's like, weird. And it's un, it's unbelievable that a professional wow. sports franchise would do that. Yeah. You know, publicly. And then on top of that, like when you look at like Ennis, like Ennis Cantor is your best healthy player and they're not using him he's like not even getting bench minutes like he went from like he was he was like a 20 and 10 guy early this year see this with is the incredible Nick percentages stuff, they do it to themselves and, and then all of a sudden he's not in the rotation and so it's like why why are you yes. guys doing like what are you guys doing like fizzdale is a good coach but like what are you guys doing i what's your end game here yeah like yeah. even if you're trying to lose games it's like i think you can you know play canter and yeah, like probably lose enough games still. Yeah, yeah like he's uh, he's really only an offensive player anyway. Exactly. He's, his, yeah. his, you know, he's a liability. And you can develop, so like, you know, <laughs> your guys like uh, still. But, yeah. But that that is exactly where I'm at with the with the trade because like okay, I totally get it, right? Uh, you know, if in a year or you know in in a summer they get KD and AD, then. And then it's like holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Like oh my god, they did it or whatever. Oh, but, and and sorry to interrupt you. There's sorry. also like rumors that KP is actually ready to go, and the Knicks. Yeah, were holding, no, no, yeah, I heard and the that Knicks too. I've heard letting that. him play. Yeah. So you know they're they're just yeah. trying to tank yeah. here. They're just trying to get Zion or whatever. Uh, I I'm know, stealing this from just, the uh, the Sports Illustrated podcast with uh, Ben Golver and Andrew Sharp a little bit, but. To me, it seems like the Knicks PR campaign was a bigger focus here than like winning basketball. Sure. Like, I think that they, you know, they, they, they're they projecting that image of like, we're the New York, man. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to want to come and play here. And actually, we might have talked about this a little bit online, Brian, but I keep wondering if you're Brooklyn, are you like, Psst, we're also yeah. in New York. Right? Yeah. We have Levert, <laughs> Allen. And um, Dinwiddie and Russell, in a and shape, uh, yeah. and we're in New York, yeah. and we also don't have James Dolan, exactly, who threw out Charles Oakley, yeah, um, exactly, who, that was shameful, Ugh. yeah, exactly, you, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, I think that we're talking about AD remembering about um, uh, Boston, yeah, remembering Ames, Isaiah yeah. Thomas. Yeah. It's like you think players don't remember what happened to Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley's one of the most respected guys, like in basketball. Yeah, yeah he's an icon. Yeah, exactly. So and they would do that to one of their own. Like that's unbelievable. And, and he, yeah, he specifically yeah. is a, like is a it's like a try tested and true like Nick. Yeah. So I don't know. And he has that's to buy. Weird. And he was buying his own tickets to the games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it, why I'm like, I feel like. A lot of people are convincing themselves that um, agents and players have zero memory and culture in a franchise doesn't matter. Um, because, uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? Again, maybe KD is like, I told New York already, I'm going to to you and I hate Chris Tapps and you got to get rid of him and I don't care if you get anything back. Because, you know, they we're in that era of the NBA where players are... Oh, lots of stuff's going on that we don't see clearly. So, yeah, but but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna happily own uh, being completely wrong because also on the other side of it, I, feel, I just feel like they're undervaluing Chris Tapps as an asset, as a player, and I think Dallas is not. Dallas is yeah. looking at Doncic and KP, yeah. and they're like, yeah. mm-hmm. all right. We're good. <laughs> uh, Dirk's leaving, and we got these guys, and here we go for the next fifteen years. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and you know, if Doncic is better than KP, they don't care. They're gonna have two guys that are gonna be, you know, perennial all star type guys. Yeah. So I don't really understand and why they're both unicorns. Exactly. I was just yeah, say. exactly. Yeah. They're both like, special. I, I don't know. Like it's it's. Uh, I, I'll, I'll I'll take a couple steps back. I guess. And they got Harrison Barnes. Who and they also have like players too. Who yeah. I thought 
used to be like one of the most overrated guys in the league, and he's actually become like underrated. Like, I think so, yeah. He, mm-hmm. Like as a third option on that team, he's gonna kill it. Yeah, I'm, he's a I'm, great defender too. Like, yeah, man. I'm a big believer of contracts. I have a, I have yeah. a they're they're huge in the underrating, overrating, and it's like mm-hmm. fantasy ball as, yeah. as well, right? Like it's it's all relative to like how much you're paying for exactly what you're getting. Right. So no, I I, I totally agree. Um. Okay, well, you know, like, uh, I'll, I'll throw this out there, but it doesn't have to be like a full conversation. Um, Mike, what's the most exciting rumor you've heard oh, about, yeah, about the trade deadline? Um, or, you know, if it's just a <laughs> rando NBA rumor, that's fine too. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I've, like, obviously the, might be a bit of a cop-out answer because we talked about it a little earlier, but the the Lakers' uh, first uh, first offer that they gave to New Orleans has to be, just like the the funniest one to me to to like offer Rajon Rondo and Lance Stevenson yeah. Michael Beasley and be like, hey this you're you're gonna do it right like yeah you're happy with this trade right like the balls of Magic Johnson to, to think that that was gonna fly and like not and you think that I was gonna net AD I think is the most radical rumor I've that wasn't right. even like you know kind of news that I've heard yeah well what's funny to me about that is that so many you know every NBA analyst or whatever is like well what what do you what do you if you're a NBA GM what would you do to get AD and basically everyone's answer is like I don't know give them whoever everyone they wanted. yeah like, like so it's weird to me that that magic would be like hello Dell <laughs> yeah I would like to offer you this. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? It's like, like, like it, but but again, everyone knows that Dell Demps has made some bad trades or he's made some mistakes. So maybe he would be like, "Oh yes, I, I do want that." Right? But, um, <laughs> yeah, Brian. Is there any any rumors you've heard? Uh, nothing real. I mean, the most exciting thing was already came to pass, which was Zinger getting dealt. Right? Because it was yeah. like one once the word got out. That, Had you heard about that before? No. Just, so like, like the day the that past. it was like the day that uh, that people. Like, I mean, the Raptors were in the running. Apparently, um, there was a couple different teams that were talking to the Knicks. Huh. Yeah, the, about about getting Przingis. He became public and about being mad so so quick, so soon before, so right? quickly. Like, yeah. But like once that first initial report of the teams that were in contention to to trade for him came out, ten minutes later, it was like he's going to the Mavs. Like what? It happened so fast. I know it was definitely like so that predetermined. Yeah, so that was like kind of exciting. Like as far as the AD stuff, that stuff's just been dragging on. There's nothing really that interesting about it to yeah. me, as well. And like with most like. Uh, trade speculation it's like guys that you know are disgruntled yada, totally. yada, yada. so there's isn't much exciting stuff going on in that regard like where you know you don't see it coming that's that's when you get really like whoa the, the Warriors just traded KD to to the Pels for, for AD like that yeah, would be yeah. exciting like something yeah. like that out of the blue but there isn't really yeah. um, this isn't really exciting and and maybe I'm you know a tinfoil hatting a bit too much but Joel Lakeup, I think, um, recently came out and said that the uh, that Golden State's going to pay whatever it takes mm. to to kind of like keep their current team. Mm. And to me, it's it's kind of telling us two things. One, they're signaling to Durant, we want to keep you, and we understand that you may not want to stay, and mm-hmm. there's other places you you could go, um, and we're going to do our best to to maintain you. And it's also kind of like placating the other uh, free agents a little bit. Um, in terms of a like, clay and Draymond, but I got to thinking it was like, are they really prepared to max out Draymond, Clay, and KD? Because if they max out Draymond, if Draymond's like, I want a five year, like as much as you can possibly give me, that's just gonna be insane. Yeah. And I and I don't think that that's real. I, I guess that's where I'm coming from. It's you, mean, like, you mean like, is it even possible? Like they're, they're claiming they can do, but do you think... That, I think yeah. they're allowed to. Right. Because they, they currently have those players, so they would just be like so far ridiculously into the luxury tax. But I just don't think it's real. Like I don't think yeah. they want to do that. Um, so that to me is like kind of giving me some like, uh, it's not exciting because I, I'm, I'm with you, Brian. It's like most, most of the big names are kind of like disgruntled. So we've heard about them for a while. There's no one kind of coming out of left field, you know, maybe if Beal got dealt or something like that, that would be kind of wild. It'd be cool but... that it finally happens. Right. Cause we've, yeah, we've known for a while, like, you know, his, his names come up so much. Yeah. It'd be cool if something actually happened. Yeah. yeah. But, um, okay. Last, last question before we move into our quickish questions. Uh, Mike, I'll start with you. Um, is there an under the radar team uh, that 
you know, is not in the rumor mill that you think uh, should be active? It's a good question. Um, I mean, the answer is yes, but do I know who that team is right now? Who can I, who could it be off the top of my head? Um, I, I like the idea of someone like Portland trying to get better. I, I know I've mentioned Portland as an answer earlier. No, I but think I think Portland's a great I would, example I would love of a Portland team to get like- just a little better because obviously they have such great talent and they have great assets and they're always they're always that up and coming team that's been their their kind of label and their brand for a while, especially with Damian Lillard being that underdog. But they're clearly ready to take a bigger step, and I think they need a a piece there to help. So you don't think Rodney Hood's the answer? Oh, I know how much we all love Rodney Hood at this podcast. So, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a no. huge Rodney no. Hood podcast. No, you know, you know who's been, you know, who's more helpful. They than that. did. Yeah, give up a lot for Rodney Hood. I, I thought was like, so what? too. I was like, you know, yeah. do you remember last year? The, con- when- <laughs> the contract that was much better is the ten day Corey Brewer signed with Philly. Like he's giving his heart playing that ten day. You seen Corey Brewer? <laughs> I did. I didn't even know that. That's awesome. So Corey, yeah, Corey Brewer got a ten day, and you should look up after this. Look at him defending Harden in the game they played. It's stupid how much effort he's putting into Corey Brewer him. and his low ass headband have <laughs> always been so exciting to me like he just seems he's definitely his one smile of those... like reaches his headband yeah yeah, yeah I've, I've always appreciated Corey Brewer um but yeah, yeah but something, something like that even like even even something tiny like that like a Corey Brewer 10 day you know it's not a flashy name or anything but it's I think it's having an impact so even something like that for Portland would be cool yeah. right yeah well I mean like yeah if you're Portland yeah. you're heading into the playoffs um, most of your teams like a fairly known quantity. Uh, I've I've said a couple times I think they're better than the sweep um, they that their season ended with last year, but at the same time I think you know they're probably a couple. They're not getting the conference finals. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, I think it's yeah. fair to say there's a couple teams that you would put over them. Mm-hmm. Although you know uh, I'm not sure how much better Houston, Denver. Okay, uh, OKC yeah. are, but they, I, would, I would say personally that I do think they are better than than Portland for sure. Yeah, um, Brian, yeah, is there is there a team? Um, I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say Portland. Uh, I was going to say Portland or OKC, just because I really love Lillard and I love mm-hmm. Westbrook, and I would love to see those guys be able to yeah. kind of get over that hump or whatever. And OKC um, was kind of close, man, with with, yeah. with Adams, George, and. And, and, but also, but like, also, like Russ, kind of inexplicably, kind of stinks this year. He, of, yeah, you yeah. know, he's not playing quite to his, you know, yeah. usual yes. standards, and that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. He'll probably ramp it up, and, and it'll be fine. But I'm sure he will. And yeah, yeah. And, and and with Russ, I feel like he's on that like, uh, you know, his whole like, kind of inefficient thing has as that that gulf has widened this year mm-hmm. but it doesn't you know the, the playoffs are very sample size yeah. yeah so that doesn't mean that that's going to be russ in the playoffs and you know what yeah. also credit to russ for being able to kind of take a back seat a little bit and really letting paul george do his thing because he's yeah he's yeah i kind of care i totally so, agree. like respect for that you know what i mean yeah. for sure uh, and the, and the other team yeah. i think utah really desperately needs to add another score to complement uh Donovan, like that guy yeah. cannot carry them by himself. Like they need, they like if they could get like Beal or someone like that. Mm-hmm. I think that would help them a lot. I really like that take, yeah, because because uh, Mitchell, you know, he's in his second year. He's, he's in, you know, I wouldn't say he's really sophomore slumping or anything like that, but the books out on him in yes, terms exactly, of like all exactly, everyone's exactly. game planning yes. for him and all yep. that kind of stuff. Yep. And, you know, go bears amazing. And, and yeah, Ingles like, obviously mm-hmm. isn't going to give you what he gives, but, Ingles, but you need more than that. That guy is like, <laughs> Ingles is, is always that guy where you're like, you He's crafty your, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. It's like playing against your uncle or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the team I was going to say, and, and may, I might just be wrong here because I think they're probably operating from a position of strength is the Clippers. I just think that, the Clippers are in that category of teams who are like, okay, as soon as it's the summer, we're going to bring over two max free agents. And it's like, do they have that much cap room? I, I, I don't think they have right. that much, but, okay. but I think, or I think they could, you know what I mean? Right. Like if they like, like if they let Tobias Harris walk and Gallo, I think there's ways that mm. they could get there kind of thing. Um, and they're pretty confident they're going to get Kawhi, uh, Balmer friggin' like <laughs> mowing down popcorn at the Raptor game. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I just think the Clippers, if I was the Clippers or the Knicks, I would say to myself, okay, let's leave the Knicks out of this for a sec. If I was the Clippers, I would say to myself, if I get one of these big, big free agents now through a trade, it might look like I lost some pieces, but I'm confident that I can resign that player and then try to bring in the other big free mm-hmm. agent. Mm-hmm. So if I'm Clippers, I'm not waiting 
for AD to get traded to LA or or to be outbidded by Boston. I'm trying to get him right now. Mm. And well, what would that offer be? Exactly. Like, do you have enough? What would the offer <laughs> be? Yeah, that's that's well, how, tough. Many, how many first round picks does the Clipper do the Clippers have? Because that's clearly what New Orleans is most concerned about. Is yeah, up, I'm I'm a big you know. Montrez Harrell fan. Mm-hmm. I, I think he'd be. I think a lot of teams should want him. Um, Lou Williams is is really specific. I, I hated Lou Williams when he was on a, on, on the Raptors, but um, he's been awesome for the Clippers. And I I think he'd compliment AD really well. I think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah so he'd be the type of so guy you want to keep. You want to keep. Also, you know, he doesn't have that much upside, right? And he's he's a little just put him in right? there. That's a good you got to hang on to. Yeah, but if yeah. they can move like Tobias, maybe like Tobias Gallo, Montrezl Harrell. I don't know, and some picks, and some picks. Like yeah. that's. Looking like something. Yeah. Plus, you know, you got AD Lou Williams. But then who did uh, maybe who'd... held on to Shea Gildress? Yeah, probably I mean, he probably uh, he probably have to go as well. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty. He's looking pretty. But good. they've got what's his face? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Euro Euro boy. Oh, uh, Tia Dosic. Did they say uh, that? Uh, they yeah, do have Tia Dosic. Yeah. Yeah. Were you thinking of Boban? No, I was, not, I was thinking of Tia <laughs> Dosic. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, cool. So yeah, I think I think that's it for NBA talk. But um. We're going to move on to some quickish questions and get pretty dumb around here. All right. Uh, but before we do that, <laughs> before we do that, oh, no, I think I lost it. Last player. Uh, the last player. Um, oh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. Uh, <laughs> I one time went to a barber and asked them to cut my hair like his. Uh, and then the barber said, really? And then I said, no, just like kind of because I was afraid. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Matt, tell me something I don't know about Gravis Vasquez. Woo-hoo! <laughs> uh, yes, if uh, for you listening at home, he uh, played for the Raps from uh, 2013 to 2015. Yeah. I remember him the, when I started doing the podcast. Mr. Vasquez was uh, uh, doing some hot threes now and then. Oh, yeah, man. The, the playoff it's shimmy? Clutch, yeah, man. the shimmy. Game one um, against Washington. Ooh. Did you know that his first name is a, uh, I think this is how you say it, a portmanteau? Do you know Wait, what that is? So Gravis is his middle name? No, his first name, Gravis. Gravis. Uh-huh. Do you know what a portmanteau is? No. So it's like... I'm, it's, all I'm hearing is poor man's toe. No. <laughs> and I'm for <laughs> sure... I'm, yeah. It's essentially like combining two other names together. So he has his parents' names combined into one. His dad is Gregorio, and his mom is like Ivis. Matt, this is good <laughs> shit. That's and that's yeah. That's you where did got your homework today. Um, that's a big um, one. That's huge. What else do I got on him? Uh, when during his time in Toronto, did you know that he would uh, frequent quite often the uh, Copacabana Brazilian restaurant and would bring anybody there? Like in North wait, America, wait, wait, he, anyone in North America who wanted to go to this <laughs> Brazilian restaurant in Toronto? Yeah. So if someone's like living in the Yukon. And they're like, hello, Gravis. I want to go to that uh, if he, he essentially, like, Come on down. Yeah. Essentially, if he's going to recommend one place in Toronto to go eat, it's going to be that place. Copacabana. Have you ever been there? I haven't. I haven't. Shame I haven't. on you. <laughs> Shame on me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I like, uh, I'm sure, you know, Bebe did a couple hot sets Oh, there. definitely. Bruno. Um, uh, Bruno. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure Bruno was welcome. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, actually, he actually, uh, I was reading about him saying how he wanted to be a mentor to Bruno. When he was there, he oh. wanted to. Yeah, good. Him. Gravis really liked Toronto. Um, that was heartbreaking, I man. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 he was one of my favorite Raptor at that time. So I, even though he got Norm Powell in a second mm-hmm. round pick, yeah, which I think maybe the turned round into pick OG wasn't Norm Powell. Oh yes, you're right. Yeah. Oh yes, you are right. Yeah, but yeah. we did get something else. Uh, it was Norm. We got and... two picks because I seconds? remember it being. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. What... I think. Was it? Siakam? I think we maybe got. Did it turn into Siaga? Uh, no, I think we maybe got OG and... If that's what, what it the, is... The pick that turned into OG and then oh the pick that God. turned into... If that's what it is, then like... All right, awesome. Uh, my <laughs> norm, norm was like 46 or yeah, something 42 like that. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So right. Norm is definitely someone who, you know, fought his way to be in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Like, so... But yeah, sorry. Love uh, Gravis. Matt, is there any more, any more... Did you know when he played, he was the only, like, Venezuelan player in the league? When he was... Uh, I did know that. You know, yeah. yeah. Um... And I guess there's no Venezuelan players now that he's gone. Yeah. Um, also, he's what he wants to do. He has a foundation okay, here in we Venezuela. Go. Uh-huh. 
and he wants Combine to essentially name. tilt the scales so you can the you know it's it's a baseball crazy in Venezuela. Uh-huh. He wants to tilt it so that it'll be basketball. He wants to like I don't know be like the Mr. Basketball. Mr. Basketball. <laughs> Honestly, he's off to a good start. <laughs> Venezuela, right? He wants to bring like NBA development camps and stuff there, and, and so he wants to be like the yeah. Messiah Jerry of Venezuela. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Basketball without borders, Vasquez style. Yeah. All right. That's well, um, what we got. If I mean, the name combo you, was the best part. Not <laughs> yeah. <lie. laughs> that's pretty uh, wild. What did, do you have a, a name combo? If that's how you were named? Oof. Yeah, I would be like something. So it's my parents' last names? No, it can be their first names. Just a mix of the two. Mine would be like Aradeb. Be Mine would be um, however you mix Javier <laughs> and Kathy. Have Kath? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's Havka. Pretty, that's Havka. Pretty, Havka. Havka, yeah. Yeah. Um Havka Rivas, I like it. I feel like it's a good time to move on. <laughs> hey? Uh, okay, Matt, yep, what do you give me that quickish question? <laughs> quickish question. Hey. <laughs> we're back. Um, we didn't go anywhere, but baby, we're back. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Brian, you know the segment. Uh, Mike, don't know if you ever... Uh, I've heard the segment. You've heard it? Okay. Heard it. Well, uh, it's going to be a lot of me meandering through <laughs> questions. They might not make full sense, um, <laughs> but you can't phone a friend. Yeah, you can't uh, phone a friend. you got to answer as quick as you can. doesn't matter if you're wrong. You guys cool. ready? Okay. <laughs> All right. Brian, we're going to start with you. Woo! Oh, the music. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Music's here. Let me get serious. Okay, Brian. It's come from Jonathan. The Miami Heat are retiring Chris Bosch's number one. Why should the Raptors retire number four? They shouldn't. Great answer. We haven't even retired Vince's number yet. You're going to retire four for button. Get out of here. Love it. <laughs> it ain't happening. Um, Mike. It's come from Tristan. <laughs> Since it's the season to talk about trades, what is the best trade you've ever made? Best Personally. trade I've ever made? That's right. Uh, was for uh, It was a pair of basketball shoes that cost me $40, and I traded them for $100. I'm calling that a trade. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, okay, Matt. It's come from Tristan. Hi, Tristan. Trade season talk part two. Mm-hmm. Who could you trade out and replace in the NBA without anyone noticing looks wise or skill wise <laughs> so like who are you Matt Duncan yeah who are you going to swap places with in the NBA and okay. no one's going to notice oh um oh what's his name uh played for the Cavs Corver like, People uh, would notice, uh, I think, <laughs> if, if was they called Corver? your name. Uh, Kyle Korver. I, I was that him? Looks wise, I mean, the height <laughs> thing's going to be tough. I'll say that. Matt is 5'11". I don't know if I've got the right um, person in my head. Korver's the guy who looks like Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. Okay, no, no. He's a him. shooter, and no. he's like 6'6". Six, six. There was someone who played for the Cavs, and then he got traded. I wonder who you're thinking name? of. Oh. Hey, oh, Andrew Wiggins? <laughs> no. Andrew Wiggins, yeah. No, you're thinking of Della Dova. Do- Della, Della Dova, that's it. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah, I actually Dova. have a friend that is a dead ringer of Delhi. Oh, wow. Really? And everyone, like, he doesn't even follow basketball, but everyone's just, like, on his Facebook, always, like, posting pictures of Delhi oh, on his Facebook hilarious. and shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That, it's going to be a weird thing when some like, I don't know if you're, okay, you know what? I'm not going to start down a, a tangent, but everyone check out the documentary Bronx Obama. It's pretty good. Quickish weird. question. Fair enough. Go. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Brian, it's coming from Tom. Did Delon Snickers zoot suit tunnel walk cross a line of trust? Uh, <laughs> in what regard? I don't. Oh, because it was, it was a sponsored thing or something? Yes. No, I mean, who cares? It made for an awesome picture. So Me that's too. That's all, yeah. that's all that matters. Just take it face value. Yeah. I thought it, anything yeah. that's really weird. He looks like ridiculous. one of those blow up things that yeah. like races around at halftime. Oh, like, I know. It looks yeah. so huge on yeah, him. Yeah, it looked good. Um, <laughs> okay, Mike's come from Jonathan. The Raptors have some gaps to fill going into the postseason. If you could only pick one, which would it be? And who would be a good player to fill that gap? 
So it's like if it's oh, shooting, just like one player. Oh, they, yeah. Um, it would be shooting. I think it would be perimeter shooting. Uh, and it would be for CJ Miles to fucking get his percentage back up. That's what it would be. It's my short answer. Okay. I know it's a bit of a. No, no. Yeah, just, Fair C, just CJ, man. Just make more shots. Which he basically has been doing for the past. He's, 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 on, he's, on, he's on a streak so. now. He's on a yeah. streak yeah. now. That's good. He's, he's well. I just I mean, mean, like, just yeah. keep it up. You're yeah. doing good, but keep he's, it up. Yeah. Uh, I had a look before. Also, Terrence Ross. Let's just get Terrence Ross back. Oh, yeah. You're, you're a Terrence Ross back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Um, <laughs> like, give him a different coach and, like, all right, this is too long of an answer, but I think we just pampered DeMar so much that we didn't really develop Terrence and he got disinterested and lost motivation. Oh. Even though he should stay motivated, that's on him. Done. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Quickish question. <laughs> okay, Matt. Uh, it's coming from James. Is there such a thing as trading too much for a player? Well, yeah, of course there is. But uh, great answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Brian. Uh, it's come from Tom. If the floor mop they use after free throws is really worth doing, shouldn't it be way bigger than the one they actually use? I don't know, maybe He's that's all I can afford. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's limits to mops. I yeah. think. All right. <laughs> Well, you got to think about the actual mopper and their physical strength as well. Like that Here could be go. all they, they can muster is yeah. carrying a mop of whatever size. <laughs> That's right. No, the logistics matter. You yeah. know what I mean? 100%. Is Boban wielding the mop? What's going on? Exactly. <laughs> um, Mike, uh, it's, com it's coming from uh, Jonathan. It's always from Jonathan. Okay, here we go. Who is going to be the next all NBA player to switch teams? I just have to give a quick answer. My bad. Um, uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, CJ McCollum. He's not all NBA. Is he thirteen? Is he thirteen? Is he even thirteen? He's not thirteen. All right. It's gonna be it's gonna be. Uh, oh my god. Uh, this freaking pressure. It's gonna be Cat. It's gonna be uh, Carl Anthony Towns. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Fair enough. Um, uh, Matt, it's coming from Tristan. Trey season talk part three. The NBA uh, needs to be shaken up with a rule change. What rule would you trade out and replace? With one of your own. Oh my god. Uh, I don't know what this rose rule is. What's the rose rule? Uh, I hate that he has his own rule. <laughs> it's basically, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gloss over the details yeah. here, but it, it's meant so that uh, you know markets can retain their players. Yeah. And it's with Rose, they they made it so that they could pay him basically a ton of money to mm -hmm. say, hey, you're you're an MVP at 24, and we yeah. have to try and give you a bunch of money so you feel like this franchise has honored you. Yeah, okay, I want to so get rid of that. Players I hate are that. I hate that rule. Get rid of it. Okay, so what would you offer instead of the Rose instead rule of as an incentive <laughs> to a young free agent? Think about Doncic, right? Dallas wants to hold on to him forever. So um, what are you going to do? I want to see uh, in contracts for star players, they get a little piece of the concessions. Oh. Okay. Mm. Okay. So as opposed to just money, you're going percentage. Stuff. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, okay, Brian. Uh, it's coming from Tristan. Uh, I think it's the end of his series. Uh, trade season talk part four: the revenge. Hmm. Who would you trade off this podcast for Anthony Davis? That's like sitting here right now. <laughs> yeah, or just me and Matt, I guess. I guess I'd trade uh, myself, I guess. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I, I, like, I wouldn't do that to either of you guys. Yeah, that would be pretty harsh. But imagine if if uh, Anthony Davis ran a podcast out of High Park, in Toronto. That'd be pretty, <laughs> that'd be pretty nuts, right? Seems reasonable. Um, okay, last oh, question. Uh, it's come from Yao. Um, and it's, I, I'm glad he actually asked it because uh, I didn't bring it up. Uh, John Wall slipped and ruptured his Achilles. Yeah. Yuck. How do you think the Wizards like that contract now? <laughs> <laughs> Just a pretty rude question, I think. But it's a question. Not so much. Not so much, right? Yeah. Not so like, much. They oh. probably didn't like it before, and now they're like double shit. Oh, probably not so much, yeah. but they also still have Otto Porter's contract, which I guess... They're probably happy that this makes that look better. By contrast, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still yeah. not past Auto Porter's contract. What's Auto Porter's contract? It's like thirty million. What? <laughs> it's twenty. It's I like it's twenty nine. I'll look it up like to that. end the pod. He's, Whoa. he's a type of max. I might be wrong. I hope, I hope, I hope it's, I hope it's just twenty one. But I thought it was like. 29. Well, that's it. That's it for quickish questions. <laughs> um, thanks everyone for listening to the podcast. Well, I, uh, well, I look up Auto Porter's contract as good podcasters 20, 26. do. Twenty six. So it's 26 right now for yeah. probably, I think, four more years. 
Then next uh, year is 27. Yeah. And that's then 28 and a half. That's a big one. He's well, gonna, you know what? Like in hindsight, this sorry, wall injury actually could, you know, not just make that contract look better, but give Otto Porter an opportunity to actually live up to the contract and, mm-hmm. and you know, yeah. be the player that. I like that silver were, lining take. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I was. I was too high on Washington for too long, mm. but I think they did what they needed to do with signing Wall, Beal, and Porter, and it hasn't worked out. Um, and they got I, Dwight Howard. You know, Otto has been playing a bit better <laughs> since since Wall went down, and and Beal looks like he's worth every bit of his contract. Yeah, so. which you know definitely just makes Wall look that much worse. Like you're yeah. the team's facilitator, yeah. Yeah. and these guys are playing better without you. Yeah, right? I think it's, even Adidas knows because the shoes they give him, the custom shoes, one of them says. Like five deep, so it's like cool team, and the other one says Wallway. So it's almost like they oh. know that he's playing this constant battle between balancing his will and what he wants and the team's needs. I don't know. That's my take of. I like those the shoes. name Wallway though. Maybe That's it has nothing cool. to do with. The, yeah, it is cool. <laughs> um, cool. Well, yeah. Thanks everyone who uh, listens to the. Po- oh, wait. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I have one last question. Uh, I'm gonna ask you, oh, Matt. God. This is coming from Peter. <laughs> Um, Peter, uh, thanks for, for letting me know you listen to the podcast, by the way. I appreciate it. Uh, Matt, this is from Peter. Okay. Um, which, uh, adjacent, um, sorry, I'm ruining ruining your question, Peter, but what's more cringeworthy, uh, Danny Green's podcast or Serge Ibaka's (laughs) cooking show? And I should say that, uh, Peter asked me this in person and he immediately said, wait a second, Danny Green's podcast is actually kind of good, but Regardless, that's I mean, the how can you not say Serge's show? <laughs> like he's making them eat worms and stuff. It's like yeah, I kind of like them both. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, Serge. But the answer, what's right? more cringeworthy? Yeah, we're well, watching all these raptors, like you know, being afraid to eat his food. Oh, okay. So it's the, it's the people for not being good forks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. that's cringeworthy. Buena forqueta. Come on, or, just eat this stuff. Of course, it's gonna be good. Um, cool. Yeah, okay. yeah, we had to throw in that last little question. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for remembering. Um, yeah, thanks everyone who listens to this podcast. Yeah, we, we we told you all the places you can listen to and help rate us out. And, you all know, that and shit. iTunes is a big one for us. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look how we get so sad at this part. I know. It's I like, know. yeah, yeah, we do have no friends. <sighs> Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, Brian, um, you're always doing shit. You're always doing shows. Uh, you know, I'm just playing video games, eating, <laughs> ordering <laughs> Uber Eats. <laughs> That watching sounds, watching basketball. That's, that sounds pretty that's how cool. I do, yeah, and then and then I guess I DJ for a living too. Yeah, you yeah, DJ so, for a living. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, and you know, I know you don't need to advertise that, but if someone was like, "Hey, I wanted to wanted to check you out," is there any, any residencies that maybe you'd point someone uh, to? Well, it's the same as I think last time I was here, which is EFS, Everly, Citizen are the three main places I play. Cool. And then I do stuff for the Blue Jays as well. So Blue Jay season's coming up. Cool. Be, in and around the dome. <laughs> right. Hitting it around, around the dome. Right. I'm just going to be <laughs> smacking it around the dome. Mostly I'm just going to be like watching <laughs> watching games, really, to be honest. But, cool. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, um, Mike, what's up? You got anything coming up? Yeah, um, I'm going to be drumming with uh, my main band. I also do a lot of music as well as comedy. So um, my band, James King in the Midnight Hours, bit of a long name. Uh, we've got a show at B-Side on the 7th. Not, uh, which is pretty soon and we're also in a contest called The Bout so come check us out on uh, March 30th and try and get us to win that help us win that contest that'd Sick. be cool yeah, yeah. sweet yeah. Um, awesome all right. thanks everyone for uh, listening to the podcast right. and thanks guys for being on it alright thank, cool. thank you alright see you later everybody bye It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. 